One of the most powerful mathematical tools available is calculus. Unfortunately, calculus only works for continuous quantities. Since a graph is a discrete object, calculus is unusable. But we can use linear algebra instead. So there's two main types of matrices associated with graphs. The incidence matrix of a graph with V vertices and E edges is a V by E matrix where A i j equals 1 if edge j is incident on vertex i and 0 otherwise. So the rows correspond to the vertices and the columns to the edges. Moreover, since every edge joins exactly two vertices, every column contains exactly two ones with the remaining entries zero, and the sum of the entries of a row is equal to the degree of the corresponding vertex. For example, let's try to find the incidence matrix for the graph shown. Note that we need to number the vertices, and it doesn't really matter how we number them as long as we do number them. So we'll do that, and also the edges. And again, it doesn't really matter how we label them. So we'll build up our matrix column by column. Edge E1 joins vertices 1 and 2, so the first column has 1s in the first and second rows, and zeros in the remaining places. Edge E2 joins vertices 1 and 4, so the second column has 1s in the first and fourth rows, with zeros in the remaining places. Edge E3 joins vertices 1 and 5, so there are 1s in the first and fifth rows, with zeros in the remaining places. And repeating the process for the remaining edges gives us our incidence matrix. And we can also go backwards. Let's sketch a graph corresponding to a given incidence matrix. Since this matrix has five rows, it has five vertices. And since this matrix has seven columns, it has seven edges. The first column has ones in the second and fourth positions, so edge one joins vertices two and four. The second column has ones in the third and fifth position, so edge E2 joins vertices three and five. The third column has ones in the first and third positions, so E3 joins vertices 1 and 3. And we can find edges E4, E5, and E6 in the same way. The seventh column has ones in the third and fourth position. So E7 joins vertices 3 and 4. But these are already joined. So this represents a second edge between the two vertices. The last example highlights a key feature of the incidence matrix. We can represent graphs with multiple edges easily. For example, let's construct the incidence matrix for the Canigsberg bridge graph. So edges E1 and E2 connect vertices 1 and 3, so the first two columns have 1s in the first and third rows and zeros elsewhere. Edge E3 joins vertices 2 and 3, so the third column has 1s in the second and third places and zeros everywhere else. Edges E4 and E5 join vertices 1 and 4. Edge E6 joins vertices 2 and 4. And E7 joins vertices 1 and 2.